Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today to reconnect with Tony Khan in anticipation of the upcoming Forbidden Door pay-per-view event this Sunday at Scotiabank Arena in Toronto, uh, historically one of the greatest professional wrestling cities anywhere in the world. So we want to get it to as many of you as, uh, as we can that are on the line here with Tony over the next hour to discuss the second edition of, of Forbidden Door. So no two-part questions for Tony on Forbidden Door. Let's make that pledge in respect to your fellow journalists so everyone gets a fair chance. And as, as Robin mentioned, please make sure that your phone is unmuted. So I'm going to turn it over to Tony right now for some opening thoughts on Forbidden Door, and then we're going to open the lines for your questions. Tony, you with us? Yeah, hey, thank you very much, Jim. Hey, everyone. I'm very excited about Forbidden Door this Sunday on Pay-Per-View. It was a great event last year. I'm very excited to be back at Forbidden Door this year. It's great to have our first ever Pay-Per-View event in Toronto. There's so many things about this show I'm excited about and excited to talk to all of you about it. So uh, with that, please fire away. All right, thanks, Tony. Let's get right to it. So we're gonna open with Phil Strom from USA Today, and then following Phil will be Dominic D'Angelo from Ad Free Shows. So Phil, you lead us off. Thank you. Uh, hi, Tony. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, first, this Sunday is the first time you're gonna have some folks the Elite and CM Punk on the same card in the same backstage since last year's All Out. That's got to be pretty exciting for AEW. Just how do you feel about that coming into the weekend? Thank you. Thank you, Phil. It's very exciting to have a pay-per-view event with so many of the top stars in AEW competing. What makes things even more interesting is we have so many of the top stars from outside AEW involved in this event, and it, it really feels like an all-star show this Sunday in Toronto at Forbidden Door. Uh, very excited to have CM Punk back in AEW. The debut episode of Collision was a great success for us, both as a huge live event and as a great television premiere on TNT. I think it bodes really well for Saturday Night Wrestling on TNT. And I'm also very excited to have uh, that great representation from the elite. It's Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay is one of the most anticipated wrestling matches all year in any promotion or any combination of promotions. Uh, really excited about that. And also, last night we announced a great 10-man tag match with Hangman Page and the Young Bucks teaming up with Eddie Kingston and Tomohiro Ishii versus John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli, Wheeler Yuta, and Shota, and Takeshita. And really think that can be a great, great 10-man tag of course, uh, Ishii faced off with the BCC and Shota pretty recently at Dominion, and that was also a great match. Um, it's very exciting to have so many of our stars back in the company, and I think this weekend's pay-per-view will fittingly be a really great star-studded event with some awesome wrestling. So very pumped for Forbidden Door and what it represents. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Thanks, Tony. Uh, Dominic D'Angelo from Ad Free Shows uh, is next, and Dominic will be followed by Chris Mueller for, from uh, Bleacher Report. Dominic. Hey, Tony, good to speak with you again, and uh, congratulations on uh, the success of Collision. Uh, looking forward to Forbidden Door this weekend, too. I'll be hosting a watch party along with it, so it'll be fun times. Um, the question I got for you is kind of a follow-up of what Phil said. Um, with CM Punk coming back and everything like that, uh, wanted to get your perspective. Uh, Dave Meltzer had some reports regarding the locker room mentality and stuff like that and how that all kind of situated. I wanted to get your own personal perspective of what it's like to have CM Punk back in the locker room and uh, what's the overall locker room mentality and dynamic with him there? Well, I think it's been so far a positive experience these past few shows. It was great to have a successful debut for AEW Collision on Saturday night. And last night, being in Chicago, it made a lot of sense to hype Forbidden Door and promote this Saturday's eight-man tag match. We have a huge match coming up with CM Punk, FTR, and Ricky Starks teaming up against Jay White, Juice Robinson, and the Guns, this new Bullet Club Gold. And I think that's a big event, and it was very cool that we were able to promote it and uh, – have CM Punk make a surprise return to Dynamite in Chicago. And I know the live fans really enjoyed that, and I thought it was a really positive thing. And 
I think it'll hopefully continue, and uh, fans certainly have got a lot of things to look forward to on Forbidden Door this Sunday. Uh, the locker room was a really positive experience at Collision, and then yesterday was a great dynamite. So uh, I felt like it's been off to a great start, certainly, especially with the really positive numbers we got for the first collision. Everyone was really excited about that, too. Thank you. Thanks, Dominic. Chris Mueller from uh, Bleacher Report is next. Chris will be followed by a write-in question from Chris Walker from DAZN News. Chris? Hey, Doc. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Uh, one thing that I think surprised a couple people about the booking of Forbidden Door was uh, booking Jungle Boy Jack Perry to face Sonata. I was just wondering if you could talk about that and whether you know there were any other choices available that you were considering to face Sonata other than Jungle Boy, or was he always the first pick in your mind? He was the first pick in my mind, and when New Japan Pro Wrestling asked me for a top star in AEW, uh, I really believe in Jungle Boy Jack Perry. From the very beginning of the company, he's been somebody we believed in, and every year he's gotten further along and built his connection with the crowd, and I think as a wrestler, he's continued to develop, and I thought it was a great match at Double or Nothing with the four pillars fighting for the AEW World Championship, and Jungle Boy is somebody I really believe can continue rising to the top of pro wrestling, and it could be a great champion for any company, so when I was sitting down with New Japan and discussing this event, Jungle Boy was somebody I put forward as one of our top stars who I thought would be a great matchup for Sonata, and if he wins, he would be a great champion for New Japan. So I'm really excited about it, and I believe Jungle Boy continues to push and push, and he's one of our top stars, and that's why I thought he would be a great matchup for Sonata, and I think it'll be a great match this Sunday at Forbidden Door. Thanks, Chris. Um, Tony, I've got a, a, a write-in here from Chris Walker from the Zone News. And after you answer that, Bill Pritchard from WrestleZone will be next. Great. So Chris Walker asks, uh, out of all the matches that you've booked and watched as a fan, where does Okada versus Dragon rank? <laughs> uh, it would rank near the top for sure. There have been a few matches that had taken place before, particularly in Japan, that I was really excited to be able to bring to America. Certainly Omega versus Osprey is a great example of that. Uh, a match that was an amazing bout at the Tokyo Dome, and we're very excited to have the rematch here at AEW New Japan Forbidden Door. I'm thrilled to be a part of that on Sunday. The initial Double or Nothing had a main event of Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega, and that was also a rematch from the Tokyo Dome where it was a dream match and something I wanted to see, but it was also then after they wrestled in Japan, something I wanted to bring to America and that I believe would do very strong business. And in the case of Brian Danielson versus Kazuchika Okada, I just believe Danielson versus Okada is one of those wrestling dream matches that goes back many years. It's never happened before. And in recent weeks, we've really tried to build anticipation for it. Since that video played at Dominion with Danielson laying out the challenge, and since Okada has responded and accepted the challenge, in recent weeks on AEW TV, we've promoted the match, built it up. Danielson has had strong words. And last night on AEW Dynamite in Chicago, Okada returned to AEW. And it was great to see him back in the ring here. It was great to have Okada back in Chicago where he wrestled with us last year. And he cleaned house. This year he successfully nailed that rainmaker on Yuta. And it's the, it certainly is one of the most anticipated matches for me personally in my lifetime. And I believe for a lot of fans, that match this Sunday, Okada versus Danielson, is one of the true dream matches in wrestling. And I believe it ranks certainly near the top for me in the most anticipated matches of my career. And of my lifetime as a wrestling fan. So I'm very, very excited for that match on Sunday. Thank you very much. 
Thanks, Chris. Bill Pritchard from WrestleZone, you are up next. Sean Ross Sapp from Fightful will follow. Bill. Hey, Tony, how are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thanks, man. How are you? Good. Uh, the, the Owen Hart tournament brackets were finally announced uh, last night in full. Uh, it seemed like ev everybody, it was well received, but one complaint that I noticed was there's no Canadians or a lack of Canadians in both brackets. And I just wanted to see if you had any thoughts on that specifically, or if you could talk about what went into putting the men's and women's brackets together for this year. Well, I wanted to give the strongest field possible, and I felt like we put together a really, really strong field with some of the top stars in AEW and, and some great names. Uh, and this is something we're going to be doing year after year, the Owen Hart Tournament, uh, and tried to pick the best eight wrestlers that we could on each side that were available on all the dates and to create the most compelling matchups for TV and pay-per-view. And I really, as you said, I think the bracket was well-received and people are really excited about the matchups. And I just tried to use uh, the best people from the roster available for those dates that I thought would make for the best matchups. And I think there are a lot of exciting matchups in there. Uh, and with the event in Canada this year, uh, and hopefully in future years, we'll be able to continue having more and more AEW events in Canada, including hopefully future Owen Hart tournaments. You know, there are great opportunities for more and more Canadian stars to get involved in these events too. And as it stands right now, there's great international representation in the tournament. And I think both the men's tournament and the women's tournament are going to be excellent events. And I'm very excited for them culminating in Calgary and of course both tournaments kicking off this week with uh, the women's tournament opening up in Chicago with Sky Blue in her hometown taking on Anna Jay tomorrow night on Friday Night Rampage and then the tournament continuing through the weekend into Canada and the men's tournament starting in Canada uh, with the very highly anticipated Punk versus Kojima match which is another match I have always wanted to see and I'm very much looking forward to this Sunday on pay-per-view. Thank you, Bill. Sean Ross Sapp from Fightful is next. Sean will be followed by Ella J, uh, who represents a wrestling gal. Sean? Hey, Tony. Uh, you, you booked CM Punk against Kojima, which is very clearly a match that CM Punk has wanted for a long time. He's even referenced Kojima in, in interviews as, like 18 years ago. But there was word that he could be facing Kenta, and maybe there were some issues there. Is there anything you can speak on in regards to that? Because, I mean, you all had to make a lot of changes to last year, and that seems like could have been the case this year as well. Well, this is a really strong card for Sunday's event. I'm incredibly excited about it, and I think this is a great hard-hitting match, and this is the match I want to see. And it's worked out perfectly that Sunday's card is – in my opinion, the most stars we've ever had on any pay-per-view we've ever done. It is such a star-studded show, and I thought it was very fitting that one of the most decorated champions in the history of Japan, Satoshi Kojima, who has been the globally honor, uh, the GHC champion, the global honored crown winner, uh, the IWGP heavyweight champion, the triple crown champion and to have one of the most decorated heavyweights ever in japan to come here and wrestle one of the most decorated heavyweights ever in america cm punk it's a huge matchup and i think it's very fitting that it's in this great owen hart tournament field where we have so many great matchups lined up and i thought it was a great match to kick off the tournament uh and i'm really excited about it uh and i think kojima for us is an amazing get and somebody I was really excited to have in. He was involved in the biggest pay-per-view we ever had, All Out 2021, which is the most successful non-WWE wrestling event on pay-per-view since the 90s. And he was a great part of that event. He had a great match with John Moxley, and I loved working with Kojima, and he was somebody I really wanted to bring back to this event. So I was 
very excited about it. And for me personally, Kojima versus Punk is a match I've always wanted to see. I think they both always wanted to wrestle each other. So it's a great, great match for us on the card. And as for anybody else that was allegedly going to be involved or allegedly rumored, I really can't comment to that. But I would say that as it stands, I think this is our best card, our best iteration of a card. And I feel like it's a stacked show with the most star power we've ever presented this Sunday on pay-per-view. Thanks, man. Sean, Ella J, a wrestling gal, is next. And we will follow Ella with a write-in from Zach Hadorn from PW Torch. Ella? Hi, Tony. How are you? Hey, I'm very well, Ella. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, I'm obviously excited for Forbidden Door this weekend. It's this huge show with AEW and New Japan. But I know a lot of people were hoping to see maybe some talent from New Japan's sister company of Stardom. So I was wondering if AEW had any consideration to include talent from Stardom. And if so, kind of did you have your eye on any certain talent to possibly include from their roster? It's a great question, Ella. Actually, when we lined up the event, I learned that Stardom had scheduled an event the same day as Forbidden Door, so a lot of their talent would not be available. It is sometimes an issue in the promotion of this event that there are other events happening in Japan at the same time, and I can only imagine how challenging that is because we have our TV over here. So uh, certainly when our wrestlers have had to go to Japan, we miss them, and I know that that can be hard. Uh, for example... Wheeler Yuta was in the Super Junior last year, uh, and Eddie Kingston going to the G1 this year. So it can be challenging at times when you lose great wrestlers for an extended period of time. Um, we've sent Willow to participate in New Japan shows, but most of the stuff Willow has done with New Japan has been in America. So it hasn't been detrimental to her ability to appear on AEW TV, which is great because Willow is a great star for us and a rising star who's been involved in a lot of the shows recently, including being on the winning team in a great match on the debut episode of Collision here in Chicago last Saturday. Uh, so with Stardom having their own event scheduled the same day as Forbidden Door, they found it very challenging to have participation in this show, and I completely understand that as a promoter. And in the future, I would like to work with Stardom more, and, and hopefully if the logistics and the scheduling work out, I think there are more things we could do. And um, through our shared friends and partners at New Japan Pro Wrestling, I do understand there is interest from Stardom in working together. And the key is finding dates when we're not doing shows at the same time, when the talent can cross over and work together a little more. But it's definitely something we did talk about and are very open to in the future. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Ella. I've got a write in here from Je uh, Zach uh, Haydorn from PW Torch. And after you answer that, Tony, we'll go to Jim Barcelona for the Miami Herald. Zach's uh, question from PW Torch is pretty straightforward. How is booking this year's Forbidden Door event different, different than putting on the inaugural event last year? Well, that's, a, that's a really great question. It's been different, and I'll talk to you about how it's been different. First of all, the rapport has been built. I already had a really good connection with Rocky, but Ghetto and I were getting to know each other better last year. Now I feel really close to Ghetto. I think we're friends and have a great relationship. And he was actually in the office with me working last night, and it was great to have him there. And uh, in addition to having a better connection with Ghetto-san and, and having built a closer relationship and, and even more trust, than we had going into last year, which I think we've worked together at a distance, you know, sending people back and forth, talking through Rocky, but really built a personal rapport last year that's gotten stronger. And I really like Ghetto and really respect him. And and also with the on the business side, I've built a stronger connection with Obari-san. And Mr. Obari's done a great job with the New Japan Pro Wrestling office in the business side, building that as Ghetto has done an amazing job with the booking and creative. And I love working with both of them. I think they're both tremendous. That's been a great part of it. Also, this year, thankfully, knock wood, I'm looking for some wood close to me right now. I might have to get up and walk around. Uh, this will have to do. Uh, we are not as injury 
bitten as we were last year at this time. Last year was the most challenging run of injuries that I've ever been through in any sport. This is my 12th year in the National Football League. I've spent seven years as the director of football at Fulham Football Club, and now we've been go- going through AEW over four years on pay-per-view and, and done hundreds of events. Never have I seen anything like what happened last year between Double or Nothing and Forbidden Door in terms of huge stars getting injured, and in all different kinds of ways, not just one thing. Uh, the injury bug truly bit us hard. And we were able to persevere. We worked really hard. And on the New Japan side, there were challenges, too. Obviously, there were some big names there that didn't make the show. I'm very excited to have Ishii participating in the show this weekend, for example, because last year that that was a challenge uh, on his end. And, of course, for AEW, Brian Danielson versus Okada. It's a huge dream match, and it's a huge step for AEW that Brian Danielson's part of the event this year. Last year, uh, CM Punk broke his foot before the event, and he was supposed to have a big match with Tanahashi. And now we have another incredible match nobody thought they were going to get to see with Punk versus Kojima in an Owen Hart Foundation tournament quarterfinal. Uh, and Kenny Omega is one of the biggest stars in AEW and one of the biggest stars ever in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And Kenny Omega is here uh, and having the rematch with Will Ospreay uh, under these incredible circumstances on. AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door. Last year, so many of these great stars were not available, and we still had what was, in the opinion of so many fans all over the world, the greatest wrestling show in the world all year last year. And this year, we haven't had those same issues with injuries. It's been, there have been issues, but it's been great uh, putting the show together, and I feel like it's been less challenging in many ways to get to this point. And we had a show that was so great last year, and people had questions going in if if we were going to be able to make it as good as it looked on paper and as good as it originally looked on paper. And we were able to do that despite all those injuries, all those challenges. This year, it feels like the card has come together without that same wave of injuries that affected last year's show, and so I believe we can do an even better show this Sunday at Forbidden Door on pay-per-view. I think the show can be even better than last year's show, which is one of the greatest things I've ever been associated with. Thanks, Zach. <clears throat> Jim Barcelone from the Miami Herald is next. Amy Nemedy from Russell Joy will follow Jim. Jim, you're up. Thank you, Tony. With the crossover we've seen with MMA and pro wrestling, the pro wrestlers, and even sometimes the companies, I'm just curious because the report I saw about Bellator, if MMA is something that you all are interested in, and if so, how does that help AEW if it does? Thank you. I was surprised to see that report. Uh, I haven't had any conversations with them about that. So... I don't know what that was about. My father hasn't had any conversations with them either. I'm not even sure who you'd talk to. I don't even know, honestly, who owns the promotion. Is Scott Coker the owner or the president? I'm not sure. Um, I'm I'm familiar with Bellator. I'm familiar with MMA uh, and have never worked professionally in this space other than having some stars from UFC appear at times in AEW. but I saw that report, and yeah, there's there really nothing to that. Uh, I'm not sure where that rumor got started, uh, but obviously it's an interesting time in the MMA business, just as it's a very interesting time in the pro wrestling business with a lot of things happening. And with the success of AEW and our international expansion, big things like this sold-out Forbidden Door show and all of the international interest around it, and the anticipation for AEW All In with over 65,000 tickets sold, setting all sorts of attendance and revenue records. It will be the biggest wrestling event ever in Europe and outside of a couple of the WrestleManias as as it stands right now and only a couple of them in all the years, uh, it would stand only next to a few of those as the most successful, highest grossing wrestling event of all time. And there are so many things exciting there on the business side and with the launch of AEW Fight Forever, 
all of this happening at the same time. It's just a really uh, great time for the business right now. So uh, I believe that with all those great things happening, people would look at that and say, well, sure, it would be great if there was that same competition in MMA, if that same spirit of competition. I do believe we are the greatest challenger brand in all of sports. People have written it, that this is the most successful sports startup since the AFL, and I believe that. I think this will end very differently than the AFL because I don't intend to become uh, part of the league we compete with. I think it's good for us to be two separate leagues, whereas the merger of the AFL and the NFL turned out to be the best thing for the fans in the end. It was also uh, a merger of equals, and it involved parity, and the NFL is the greatest league for parity of competition and running the business in all sports, and all sports leagues aspire to be that. I think in pro wrestling, what we've built in a relatively short time is very exciting and looks good to a lot of people. And if you could create that in MMA, it would be very exciting. But I honestly have never had any talks, and my father has never had any talks about buying Bellator, so I was surprised to see that. Was that something – I was at the show. I was backstage yesterday. Somebody sent me that. Was that something Ariel Hawani reported? I'm asking. I don't know. Yeah, I, was yeah, I know. I was, I was muted. Yes, that was correct. You're correct. Okay. Well, it would not be the first inaccurate thing Ariel Hawani has reported. That is completely inaccurate, but that's Ariel Hawani for you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Amy Nemedy from WrestleJoy is up. Amy will be followed by Stephanie Chase from Digital Spy. Amy. Hi, Tony. Congratulations on what is a very exciting card for Forbidden Door. Thank you. Um, with so many people on this card, you've talked about all of the star power that you have. I really want to focus on the BCC versus the Young Bucks, Hangman Page, Ishii, and Eddie Kingston. With the BCC, we have Moxley, Claudio, Wheeler Yuta, Takeshita, and the evil Don Callis, and Shota Umino. Um, You have a very compelling story with the Elite and BCC, but in this match, you also have a mix of people with very different goals. Eddie Kingston and John Moxley both faced the Young Bucks at Double or Nothing 21. And Ishii has never fought with them in New Japan, only against them as a part of the faction Chaos. Can you talk about bringing this match together with people from different backgrounds who may not even get along necessarily, but have the same goal in taking down the BCC? Or in Kingston's case, just Claudio? Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I think it's a very exciting match. There are some really fascinating dynamics at play. Uh, Wheeler Yuta brought up a pretty good point today. I guess he's officially out of chaos now, for sure. Uh, and uh, I think he has been for a while, as we've seen, but uh, that amused me. Uh, well, I uh, think there are a lot of fascinating dynamics at work here. Certainly, uh, with Tomohiro Ishii and his involvement, he's got such an amazing history with some of his own teammates here. Like you said, he's fought against the elite. He's fought against the Bullet Club at times, and certainly he's fought against Eddie Kingston. Uh, and we've also seen Ishii have great matches against the BCC. They had a great six-man match at Dominion, and one of the best matches I've seen in recent years was Ishii versus Moxley in the G1 in 2019. And I think there are so many fascinating dynamics here. Certainly the dynamic between Eddie Kingston and John Moxley is a major emotional hook to this match. And I thought John Moxley and what he said and, the, and his behavior and his demeanor added a lot to the show yesterday. And it was a great, great ending to the show, I thought, to have several of the matches intersect and then have uh, Eddie Kingston and John Moxley have that interaction in the ring and build some anticipation for Sunday. Certainly, I think that got people more interested in what's going to happen there. And when Eddie said he had a partner, he, he meant it. He brought a, one of the top wrestlers in the world out in Ishii-san. And I think that's going to be an amazing 10-man tag match, following up on some great matches these people have had with each other. There's an amazing anarchy in the arena. They're great six-man tag at Dominion. And now 
something to make it very different to see John Moxley and Eddie Kingston, these two longtime best friends standing on the opposite sides of the ring, makes it really, really interesting. And I know that it's going to be a great match on Sunday at Forbidden Door. And it's something now I personally really want to see, too. So I'm very excited about it. And I thought uh, with Ishii coming in, with Mox and Eddie on opposite sides, with Eddie hating Claudio so much, with Yuta's history, uh, with Ishii, uh, you know, being uh, chaos guys, and with with, um, so many other things happening in this match, it's just really fascinating. And certainly the elite in the BCC coming out of Anarchy in the Arena, that amazing classic they had at Double or Nothing. Uh, there's a lot of hate, a lot of uh, furor between those factions, those teams. And now I think even more interest in this match with Eddie Kingston and Ishii being involved, as well as Shota stepping in uh, with his mentor, John Moxley. And great to have Takeshita involved in this match too after he really betrayed the mentorship he got from the elite so uh i think there's a lot of interesting dynamics and hopefully it'll be a great match on sunday at forbidden door thank you thank you very much amy stephanie chase from digital spy is next and i'm going to follow uh stephanie with a write-in question from will gray from box spots and chair shots Stephanie. Hi, Tony. How are you? I am very well. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. So, Tony, you're always juggling a lot, you know, booking wise. Um, And we've heard that Brian Danielson, Jericho have some involvement in booking and creative as well as CM Punk on Collision. So I was wondering with the women's roster growing, we've got like Willow, who we'll see on Sunday, Sky Blue and more young talent. Are there any women taking a role backstage in helping with booking and creative of the women's division and just making sure that there's female perspectives heard when working on like characters, directions and storylines for the women's roster? Yeah, Madison Rain and Sarah Stock both are very involved in the coaching and producing of matches. Uh, I have a lot of people who come in and make suggestions and bring ideas, including all the people you just named and there are several others. So in addition to some people you named, certainly uh, Sarah Stock and Madison Rain, in addition to some other people like QT Marshall uh, and Pat Buck, Sanjay Dutt, Jerry Lynn, Dean Malenko, and many others uh, that have had involvement. But certainly uh, Sarah has added a lot while she's been with us, and and Madison has been here uh, a bit longer, and Madison is tremendous, and uh, she had been out of wrestling with an injury, but she's still backstage with us uh, dealing with a foot injury she had in a match a couple months ago and excited to get her back in the ring at some point, but she is uh, tremendously useful backstage and uh, great to get their perspective on the women's division. We have a great team of people and I love to get the perspective of everybody at CAM backstage, including wrestlers. So uh, that might mean, if, I, if it's a women's division, talking to a lot of the top women in the company and getting their perspective on matches, people they want to wrestle, uh, ideas they might have, and I'm trying to utilize everybody's stuff. And when it comes to all these shows, whether it's Dynamite, Rampage, Collision, or our pay-per-view events, at the end of the day, there's one final say and one person who puts the card together, and it's me. I'm a big paperwork guy. and So by being a big paperwork and organization guy, I find myself in the middle of everything. So I'm not just like a big picture guy. I also do all the paperwork and put all the shows together. So um, every idea has to go through me at the end of the day. So a lot of the top women in the company, wrestlers, uh, are also very creative people. So I love getting ideas from people like Ruby Soho, Tony Storm, Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter. Uh, a number of others. Jade has had great ideas at times. And uh, great to have Chris Statlander back in the company. I love working with the wrestlers personally, hands-on. And then also we have great coaches, men and women, um, that will talk to them, get their ideas, and we try to organize things. And then I put everything into one format to get us all on the same page, literally. Thanks. 
Thank you, Stephanie. <clears throat> so Tony, I've got a write-in question here uh, from Will Gray from Botch Spots and Chair Shots. And after you answer Will, Dave Meltzer from the Wrestling Observer will follow. Will's question is, with successful relationships in the past and the success of Forbidden Door, are there plans to open that door to other companies outside of New Japan Pro Wrestling in the near future? Well, it's a great – so so let me make sure I got – can you read that right in one more time, Jim, just to make sure I didn't no. misunderstand? Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Um, with, with the successful relationships that you've had in the past and the success of Forbidden Door, are there plans, given all that, to open that door a little bit wider, possibly to other companies outside of New Japan Pro Wrestling in the near future? It's a great question. I think the relationship we have with New Japan is very strong, pun intended, and it's something we're going to continue. Um, we have other strong relationships with other wrestling promotions, but nothing quite like what we do with New Japan Pro Wrestling and the depth of it. And I think there's a lot of common ground we share, and it's become a great relationship. And it wasn't a great relationship to start, and I think that's part of what makes it so cool that it's become so so strong. Uh, for the wrestling fans, I think it would be great if we get involved and work with more promotions. Something I would love to do is get more involved in Lucha Libre. I don't think it's any secret I love Lucha, and I love bringing in the top luchadors. I had a really funny conversation the other night. Um, where were we? Was that in San Diego? Was that? Might have been in, after the San Diego show. Um, and... I was talking to a lot of the Lucha stars and a lot of the best luchadors in the world, honestly, and we were all uh, just sitting around talking after a show, and I don't think they knew how much I loved Lucha, and we started talking, and then I started talking about old CMLL and how coming out of college, especially after WCW and ECW closed, I really found myself watching a lot of the CMLL TV at the time, and I thought it was a great run of wrestling. It's funny. I mean, uh, the Jungle Boy theme was at, at one point, the song is called Tarzan Boy. Well, there was a wrestler, Tarzan Boy, who teamed with Ultimo Guerrero and Ray Bucanero, and that was a, a pretty similar entrance, I'll have to admit. And uh, there were a lot of other things I was inspired by at the time. It's kind of cool. Mystico is back in CMLL now. I thought Mystico was great at the time. And, uh, you know, Shocker and Dr. Wagner so many great things. I was a really, really big fan though, of Ray Bucanero and Ultimo Guerrero in particular. And I love talking to the luchadors about the current lucha and the old lucha. I think we have some of the best luchadors in the world in AEW now, but more of the luchadors in AEW now are from AAA. And I really like Conan. And uh, we don't always agree on everything wrestling-wise, but as a person, Carlos is a really good guy, and I like him. And I like working with a lot of the luchadors that he has promoted and some of them are people he's discovered and we've had a great group of people that have come through here and i think a lot of our american and international wrestlers from outside of mexico also are great at working that style so i do love working with lucha libre also um but one thing that's challenging is there's two major promotions and we sit in a pretty interesting place where new japan is partners with cmll but but i work pretty closely at times with AAA and bring in a lot of those wrestlers. And that at times can present challenges in promoting events. But if there was a way to get all of the top Lucha stars uh, on the same page and if we could have more involvement there, I would love that. But also I don't want to get in the middle of other people's promotional battles because I know that can be challenging. And uh, um, to be fair, uh, other people have gotten in the middle of mine at times. <laughs> so uh, I. I do love Lucha, so I think that would be something interesting there. Of course, I do think in addition to working with New Japan, there have been conversations about if we could do things with stardom, which I think would be really exciting, and we have a great women's roster in AEW and a great women's roster that I control in Ring of Honor as the booker there too. Um, so I would really love to have more involvement with stardom, more involvement uh, with Lucha promotions. I think... There are no partnerships in wrestling as strong as the partnership between AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling, though, and I think that's part of what makes Forbidden Door such a unique event, and I think that's 
uh, part of why this card is going to be so great on Sunday for, for this Forbidden Door pay-per-view. But I would love to work with other promotions and, and create other great events, too. And I think uh, those are some of the great opportunities out there if we were to ever try to create other strong partnerships, so to speak. Thank you. Thanks, Will. <clears throat> Dave Meltzer from the Wrestling Observer is next. Dave will be followed by Stu Myrick from The Horn, 109 point, 104.9 in Austin. Dave. Dave, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Hey, yeah, I can now. Hey, Dave. Okay, hey, how are you doing, Tony? Um, yeah, on the um, on the first on the first collision show Friday night, um, CM Punk made the reference to the term "one bill fill," and of course, you know, watching that, I'm going like, we've all heard the rumors and everything like that. I guess the best way to say is there smoke to that fire now that it was sort of referenced on television, or would you just kind of say it was a figure of speech? Well, it was a throwback in many ways uh, to the wrestling. I grew up on, and I remember being a teenage kid in high school and watching wrestling on TNT, watching a two-hour wrestling show every week on TNT and seeing a, a huge wrestling star of the time come out and reference Ted Turner on TNT. And I thought it was pretty cool to turn forward the clock to the present day and have a big wrestling star of the moment on TV referencing Mr. Zasloff, and especially given the way this show came to be, given that it was in the 90s where Ted Turner said, I want to give a slot on Monday night on TNT to pro wrestling, and here we are in 2023, and Mr. Zasloff, he runs the Turner Networks, and also he runs a large percentage of entertainment, and uh, he's the boss of Warner Brothers Discovery, movie studios, TV channels, and so many things. And it's amazing to see how far that Turner empire has come and what it's become from what we, as wrestling fans, knew as the empire of TBS, TNT, TCM, CNN, and those great channels. Uh, and now with wrestling on TNT on Saturday nights, this was Mr. Zaslov's idea. He was the one who said, give two hours, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, every Saturday night to AEW. And we created Collision. And it was, I thought, very fitting to see Phil give a shout-out to Mr. Zaslov. And it's no secret that AEW, uh, we're trying to grow our revenues, chasing that media bag. So I thought that was uh, very cool and a nice nod to the growing business that is AEW, where we're doing now multi-million dollar live gates, uh, sell out international shows, and got a video game launching, and we've already got nine-figure revenues, and we're growing and growing and pushing to hit that magic number that Phil referenced. So uh, I think it was, it was very cool and uh, a nice nod to what a hot time it is in the wrestling business and how exciting it is for pro wrestling in the media space right now because it feels like there's a lot of pro wrestling on TV and for a fan, especially, well, for all fans, for I was about to say one specific age group of fans, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'll take it across all age groups because I think it's whether you were there 20-something years ago and had all this wrestling on TV and knew what it was like to have wrestling almost every night on TV and be able to find it whenever you wanted, because it wasn't like that for a long time for a lot of us. And it feels like it is again now, where there's a lot of wrestling on TV, and that's because of the fans, because fans are supporting it and uh, making wrestling good business again for the TV networks. So I thought it was very cool as we premiere a new show to reference that and what's happening in the world of media. Uh, and uh, it was a great debut, and that was a big part of it. So uh, I enjoyed it. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Stu Myrick from The Horn, 104.9 in Austin, is next. 
Stu will be followed by Steve Fall from 10 Count. Stu. Tony, thank you so much for your time and uh, looking forward to the event on Sunday. I wanted to ask about the brackets for the Owen Hart Cup tournaments. Uh, very stacked brackets. I, of course, I'll be rooting for a competitor that I get to work with quite a bit here in the Austin area in the natural Dustin Rhodes. Uh, one omission, though, in the men's tournament particularly, Adam Cole, who won the tournament last year. Uh, I know, I do see Britt Baker in the women's tournament, and of course she won last year, so she gets to defend the cup uh, on her side. But uh, what was the reasoning behind uh, Adam Cole not being in the tournament? Is it because he may be involved in the world title picture with MJF, or just just uh, talk about that for a moment? Well, in addition to being involved in the title picture and being a great contender, Adam Cole is in the Blind Eliminator World Tag Team Tournament. So with his participation in the Tag Team Tournament, it would be challenging for him to be in both brackets at the same time. Uh, I'm planning to promote all the exciting tournaments coming up. It kicks off this week with the Owen Hart Tournament launching on Rampage. A bracket breakout with the, the brackets going forward for the fans to track what's happening in the Owen Hart men's tournament, the Owen Hart women's tournament, and next week as we launch the Blind Eliminator bracket. We know MJF and Adam Cole are going to be a team, and we're going to learn more about the other teams involved in this great tournament chosen at random in that blind drawing by Tony Schiavone. And I think Adam Cole had an amazing match last week on Dynamite in that 30-minute draw with MJF. And we saw them back in the ring together facing each other last night face-to-face. -face. Uh, but now we learn they're going to be partners in this tournament, which is very exciting. They have a lot of differences, but they do have some things in common. Uh, both of them have had a checkered pass with Tony Schiavone, for example, as we saw last night. And I'm very excited to see them as a team after seeing them as great opponents in a great match last week. So Adam Cole was a great winner for the Owen Hart Cup Foundation Tournament. And I'm very excited to have him uh, participating now in this tag team tournament. So uh, he will be very involved in TV, just in a different tournament this year than last year. Thanks, Stu. Thank you, Stu. Steve Paul from 10 Count, you are next. He will be followed by David Bixenspan from Babyface versus Heel. Steve. Hey, Tony, very excited about the show this weekend. I'll be there live enjoying the event. But Darby Allen and Stingy, a tag team partner, and of course, once a to be determined announcement is there, everyone online starts throwing out names. I've asked you before about this, but I'll ask again. Have you spoken to Goldberg about coming into? AEW being involved, maybe not even Forbidden Door, just being involved with AEW. I have had nice conversations with Bill uh, about being involved with AEW at times. Uh, it's a it's a good thought. Um, I don't know if it would be the perfect fit for who Sting and Darby are going to bring to Collision this weekend, but I also uh, want to leave uh, all the doors open for them and their partner for Forbidden Door, but I think it would it would ideally be somebody that would step in and be a good fit for the Forbidden Door show. I think Bill Goldberg is a legend in pro wrestling. He's one of the biggest names in the sport, and certainly I've had nice conversations with him at times. Uh, and as for who's Sting and Darby bring in this weekend. There certainly have been a lot of guesses. I think a lot of them have been more in line with uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling's biggest names. Uh, but Bill Goldberg has gone over and, and competed in, in Japan too, so it's a fair question. Um, and you have asked me that before, as you noted. Uh, but, uh, you know, at this time, my, my answer would be the same as it was last time. Yeah, I've had nice talks with Bill at times about doing things with AEW, and that's probably all I could say. Thank you, Steve. David Bixenspan from Babyface versus Heel is next. And David will be followed by Michael Shalek from SC Scoops. David. Hey, Tony. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Bix. So 
guess the best way to put this is there's this been been this kind of ever present rumor for a while. I guess you know stemming from the line at the All Out press conference about trying to run a business that CM Punk might have an ownership stake in AEW. Is that the case, or was when he said that line, was that just like a colloquialism regarding his behind-the-scenes role? That's just a colloquialism. Um, I own the business, but he's one of the top stars here and has an interest in AEW being a strong box office business. And his return is helping us and helped launch AEW Collision with a great rating and he drives interest in our TV shows and pay-per-views and merchandise and is a huge star for us. So he's definitely interested in the bottom line being strong and he wants a company to do well. Uh, th I think that's a colloquialism though, <laughs> to answer your question. <laughs> Thanks, David. Michael Shalek from SE Scoops is next and we will follow Michael with what I believe will be our final uh, reporter of the day, uh, Rick Uccino from SB Nation. Michael? Hey, Tony. Uh, good luck this weekend and next week with the video game launch. Thank My you. question relates to AEW Collision viewership. So the show started off great with, I think it was 800,000, 816,000 viewers for the premiere episode. Um, has Warner Brothers expressed what level of viewership they're looking at to consider the show a success? Is it simply a matter of doing better viewership than what was airing previously in that time slot? Or is there like a range that they would really be happy with? Well, I know that this was considered a very successful debut. I'm not sure exactly what the specific number projection is week to week, but I know that for the debut, we beat estimations. It was a very successful debut for AEW Saturday Night Collision on TNT. And going forward, I don't know what the exact number that would be considered uh, the projection week to week. I do know that certainly past performance of the time slot would be a good comp. I think we have high expectations and we were really excited about the debut of Collision. And I think it's Great timing for us. As you said, it's just a really exciting time for AEW with the launch of Collision and now Forbidden Door this weekend. And it feels like, at least to me personally, I feel like we've been on a great run of shows. I really liked the show last night and a lot of the things we did leading into Forbidden Door. I loved the debut of Collision and certainly I felt like the Dynamite the week before that was also very, very strong and built anticipation. And now with Fight Forever coming out and the summer is just going to continue to build we have so many shows I'm looking forward to. And then, of course, all in London at Wembley Stadium. So many big things happening. Uh, so uh, for me, yeah, it's uh, it feels like there are a lot of great things. And that number was considered a, a big success. Going forward, I would say we just want to do the best we can every week. I don't know exactly what the right number to, to, you'd, you'd consider a success would be, but I, like you said, I think it was looking at past performances of that time slot. You know, you'd see we've, we've done very well with our launch, and I hope to continue doing good numbers on Saturday nights on TNT for Collision. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Okay, so Rick Uccino from SB Nation, you're our go-home reporter. So you're up, Rick. All right. Well, well, no pressure on me, uh, Tony. Thank you so much uh, for getting uh, one more in here for me, and uh, sure, really appreciate your time. Um, obviously, there's been uh, a couple of big returns in the last few weeks. Uh, first, Chris Statlander, you know, shocking the world, defeating Jay Cardgill, and now uh, CM Punk has come back. Uh, both coming back from major injuries, and both of them really kind of just diving into the deep end. Chris had five matches within her first eight days. CM Punk is going to have uh, three matches and hit every major show within his, within his first eight days. When it comes to handling a workload for, for talent when they come back from a, a major injury, and for these stars, their second ones uh, with the company, do you have a set philosophy on that, or do you kind of take it on a talent-by-talent on -talent basis of how much work they can handle out of the gate? Well, can you, so can, can you, out of the, okay, 
That's a great question. Um, I think I, I think I got the gist of what you were asking there. So it was it's it's a very good question. Um, it certainly depends on the wrestler and the injury. I think as to the amount of work you want to have them uh, doing coming off a major injury and how quickly you rush them into multiple matches. I thought for both CM Punk and Chris Statlander, they're both great stars in AEW, and both of them had very different injuries, but they were both very serious injuries that kept them out for a long time. And in both cases, when they're available, we really want to get them in there and, and feature them. So Chris Statlander has been a major part of the TV and also out on the house shows defending her championship. And CM Punk now uh, has hit the ground running and is a major part of the wrestling again here in AEW. And he had a great return match last week in the trios match. One week later, he's coming back. And as you said, he's got two matches this weekend in Toronto. And that's great for us. I think when we have a wrestler coming back from an injury and they want to work their way back in, I'm not going to ask them to do anything crazy and wrestle, you know, three one-hour draws in the same day, every day, week in, week out. Uh, But I do think it's good for people to come back and and get their – you know, knock off any rust and give them the opportunity to hit the ground running, so to speak. And in the case of both CM Punk and Crest Statlander, I think they both come back and it's been a really positive experience for us. And now with Chris, you know, it was a big test for her doing the house show loop and, and then coming back and having another TV match after that. And for CM Punk, it'll be a great challenge, I think, going out and wrestling Saturday night, this weekend on Collision, and then Sunday at Forbidden Door. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Tony, um, before we close, any any final thoughts? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's been a really – I really appreciate it, Jim. I think we covered so much great ground here. I feel like a lot of the things I wanted to talk about, we had a great chance. Uh, it feels like there's a lot of anticipation for this weekend. I'm very excited – for it myself. I think it's going to be a great rampage with some of the great stars from New Japan Pro Wrestling and kicking off the Owen Hart Cup Foundation Tournament. Uh, I think it'll be really awesome, as we just mentioned about Collision, to have that eight-man tag, as well as some of the big matches we've announced, Not in addition to CM Punk, FTR, and Ricky Starks versus the Bullet Club Gold, Jay White, Juice Robinson, and the Guns. We also have Hiroshi Tanahashi returning to AEW to take on Swerve Strickland. And I know Swerve uh, wants to get in the ring with Tanahashi, wants to prove he's the one who should be earning that world championship opportunity. And Swerve's one of our top stars. Tanahashi's one of New Japan's top stars. I think that's a great matchup for free on TV on Saturday night on TNT. And there's a lot of other great stuff on that card with, Andrade El Idolo versus Brody King. And uh, so much to look forward to on the event. Uh, I know uh, the Owen Hart tournament continuing through the weekend is something I'm very excited about. In addition to launching the men's tournament with Punk versus Kojima at Forbidden Door. Very excited to have Sky Blue wrestling Anna Jay in her hometown tomorrow here in Chicago on Rampage. And then also to have on collision Willow Nightingale versus Nyla Rose, and it's a big weekend for Willow Nightingale because she's wrestling Tony Storm for the AEW World Championship, and of course Willow herself being the New Japan Strong Women's Champion, it's a great AEW versus New Japan card at Forbidden Door, and that's a big part of it. And then Willow versus Nyla in the Owen on Saturday night, that's a really big deal, and uh, then for the tournament to continue with uh, Athena versus Billy Starks at the Zero Hour, it's going to be awesome weekend of wrestling in the Owen Hart Foundation Tournament and, and I think an awesome weekend of wrestling across Rampage, Collision, and Forbidden Door. Um, so I'm just really pumped for the weekend and it feels like uh, that's the vibe 
among so many of you in the wrestling world. And I just really wanted to thank all of you for joining us today for the media call. Without all of you, it wouldn't have been possible to launch AEW or to put together an event like Forbidden Door. Without all of you covering AEW and the idea of AEW from the very beginning. So thank you very much for everything you do. I really appreciate it. Hopefully see a lot of you soon at the Scrum or at a future Scrum. And if you didn't get your question answered today, I'm sorry. And hopefully I'll see you at a Scrum or, or get a chance to talk to you there because I really do try when people come in live for the pay-per-views and travel. I want to answer every question we can there. And I would love to have answered every question today. Um, Hopefully we got most of your questions answered, and thank you again, and see you all at Forbidden Door. All right, Tony. Thanks a million, and just to echo what Tony said, on behalf of everybody at AEW, uh, thanks for joining the call, and, and we, we all <clears throat> you know, truly appreciate your investment and commitment to the wrestling industry. <clears throat> so, you know, per our tradition, we're going to be distributing an audio recording to all attendees shortly. Be looking for that. Uh, we hope to see you this weekend in Toronto. And in the meantime, on behalf of everyone at AEW, we wish you the best of everything this summer and always. See you in Toronto.